brought to you by the Cool Fat Burner, the world's first brown fat weight loss device. Hey everyone, we just wrapped up a nearly four month long experiment involving before and afters of DEXA scans, uh, indirect calorimetry readings, and hormonal profile testing, uh, all culminating in three separate experiments, videos, related blog posts. Uh, the first will be about the cool gut buster and the spot reduction of stomach fat. The second will be about the resting metabolic rate, especially as it pertains to the cold adapted state. And the third will be about body recomposition and hormone levels. All right, let's see what happened. Okay, so this video and experiment was about uh, the cold adapted state and your resting metabolic rate. Does being cold adapted raise your resting metabolism? Let's quickly define your resting metabolic rate, sometimes called your resting energy expenditure. This is the number of calories you burn when completely at rest. So if you were to lie down all day, this is how many calories you would burn. And of course, it's usually measured while lying down. No exercise, no cold exposure, no food, nothing that could raise your metabolism. Your resting metabolic rate comes largely from the organs, the brain, heart, liver, kidneys. They're working 24-7, so they are burning a lot of calories. Skeletal muscle burns around 8 calories per pound per day. That is at rest. So if you carry 100 pounds of muscle, that's 800 calories per day you're going to burn at rest from your muscles. Even fat burns around 3 calories per pound per day. This is regular white fat, not brown fat. So the conclusion to be drawn from that is when you lose weight, even if it's just fat you lose, your metabolism tends to go down. You have less tissue to feed, and even fat, even white fat, does require some calories to uh, maintain itself. It may be helpful to compare your resting metabolic rate to your daily energy expenditure, what most people think of as their metabolism and burning calories. Things like exercise, which of course can burn calories, cold exposure, what the cool fat burner and cool gut buster are all about. There's NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, just walking around carrying things throughout the day. Uh, there's the thermic effect of food. Uh, protein, for example, uh, 25 to 30 percent of the calories in protein are used up in digesting it. A somewhat similar principle is with carbohydrates, which can temporarily raise leptin and thyroid levels, which both can increase uh, metabolism. And of course, there are stimulants which can increase your uh, daily energy expenditure. So if you combine, if you add your resting metabolic rate to your daily energy expenditure, you get your total daily energy expenditure. This is the total amount of calories you can possibly burn uh, in a day. This, of course, brings to mind the calories in, calories out uh, paradigm of weight loss. On the left side of the equation, you have... Uh, you know, all your caloric intake for the day, all food and drink. And then on the right side, you have your resting metabolism and your daily energy expenditure. So whichever side of this equation is uh, greater will determine whether you gain or lose weight. Okay, so let's define the cold adapted state. What does it mean to be cold adapted? Whenever you engage in cold thermogenesis at high enough an intensity over a period of time, the benefits of cold thermogenesis begin to function all the time, automatically, even on days when you don't engage in cold thermogenesis. So things like the reduced systemic inflammation and the increased glucose insulin sensitivity, your increased mitochondrial density and efficiency, enhanced immune system, increased autophagy, the cleanup of harmful junk cells, uh, boosted irisin levels, can help build muscle and lengthen telomeres involved in longevity. All of those traits and attributes are functioning at an elevated level above normal above what a non-cold adapted person experiences once you're cold adapted. So the question then, does being cold adapted also raise your resting metabolism? Do you burn more calories even at rest when you're cold adapted? So for the before readings of the experiment, I stopped all cool fat burner use. I allowed my cold adapted state to kind of fade away. I fattened up to 210 pounds and the before Resting metabolic rate came in at 2,074 calories per day. And as you can see, that is right around average. As soon as the test was over, I started hitting cool fat burner use hard. Uh, I'd go hardcore from one to three hours a day, moderate intensity from one to three hours a day, and in casual intensity, any number of hours for the rest of the evening lounging in the same room. 
uh, probably an average of four to five hours a day, but uh, sometimes I'd go as long as 12 hours a day, 12 hour long sessions. Within a few weeks, my cold adapted state returned full force. We had a record breaking cold winter. I could throw on both devices, go out in sub freezing temperatures and barely have goosebumps. So eight weeks later, from January 16th to March 16th, after having regained the cold adapted state, after having lost 14 pounds, I went and took the after test and my resting metabolic rate shot up to 2,477 calories a day. That's an increase of 400 calories a day, uh, despite having lost all that fat. Remember, whenever you lose any tissue, any weight, even fat, your metabolism should go down because you have less tissue to feed. Mine actually went up, and as we can see, it's 30% faster than normal, but it gets better. I took off from March 17th to April 10th, that's around three weeks, and I kept everything at maintenance. Uh, and then I went for four more weeks of cool fat burner use, uh, cold thermogenesis, the whole thing. Uh, and on May 12th, I went down for a third time, measured my resting metabolic rate, and found that it had shot up to 3,000. 1,125 calories a day. That's 65% above normal. That means that when I'm cold adapted, I'm burning more calories at rest than most people do all day, even after adding in their exercise and other daily activities. And of course, this immediately harkens back to the whole how I eat junk food and lose weight video, where I was able to eat more and more garbage junk food and yet kept losing weight. So the immediate question that pops to mind is, well, where is this massive calorie burn coming from? What specifically is happening physiologically to explain all this? Well, we've talked before about uh, the various levels of cold thermogenesis, uh, and we demonstrated in the lab the related calorie burn numbers from casual to moderate up to hardcore. We've also proven the cool fat burner can activate brown fat and keep it active for long after the session ends, and that corresponds to my personal experience of having increased sensations of heat sometimes while well, frequently up to 10 12 hours later sometimes even longer and again there's the study of the constitutionally lean women who have active brown fat at room temperature 24 hours a day so here's my guess as to what at least in part was going on one uh, i frequently do my cold thermogenesis sessions in the evening i wore the cool fat burner the night before so i could have had some residual uh, increased heat production brown fat activity even through until the next morning also note that once you become cold adapted, uh, you have a bigger, more profound reaction to cold exposure. So even though you can see in the pictures I was dressed warmly uh, in what to me felt like normal temperatures, it was actually like 40 degrees out, at least for the middle test. So perhaps I had some incidental, accidental, tangential, uh, ambient cold exposure going on. Cold thermogenesis kicked in even though I felt normal. Uh, because I was cold adapted. However, that doesn't explain the third reading, the biggest one we had, because it was 80 degrees out that day. Now, it was really hot in my car. It's getting a little bit of a greenhouse effect, so I did put the windows down driving to the location. It was like an hour and a half drive one way. But windows down in an 80, 75 to 80 degree day, that should not have been enough to induce cold thermogenesis. Regardless of the exact uh, factors and what what's causing this massive increase in the, my resting metabolic rate, it obviously has to do with being cold adapted has to do with doing cold thermogenesis sessions, but as we see, I'm burning massive amounts of calories even on days when I don't use the cool fat burner. So yet again, we have another uh, successful experiment and validation of the power of cold thermogenesis. All right, until next time. Brought to you by the cool fat burner, the world's first brown fat weight loss device.